All right, so this is part two of uh, the brake job series on the Honda Civic. So I've skipped some of the stuff that I showed you in part one, so you should take a look at the beginning of that before watching this video. So this one has a uh, stuck caliper. The wheel is off the ground, but you can't, it doesn't turn very nicely. And uh, there's a reason for that. So I got this sort of jacked up. It's not loaded up on the wood blocks as of yet, but I'll uh, get this wheel off here and we'll take a look at what's going on. If you find that your uh, sockets, your impact gun can't get something off, you can kind of help it with your hand just to take the uh, slack out of it, and that usually helps. The more extensions you use, the more slack there's going to be in the system. Get your plugs off. This was off just like a, a month ago to do the air valves. I'm surprised this is stuck on. So this was kind of interesting. Let me get this wheel out of the way. So the garage that serviced my wheels last time was also the garage that did the brake job on this thing. And it was kind of irritating the way they put it to me was that my brakes are all messed up and they needed to be replaced. But I brought this to them about a month after they did the brakes saying that they were sticking on and they wouldn't help me with it. And I go, ugh, whatever. Too much going on in my life to deal with it. And then you can't go to them two years later and tell them to fix it. So this is sort of where we're at. You can see the condition of this rotor. It has been cooked many times. This wasn't a cheap, cheap rotor. You can see it had a coating on it, but they've buffed it off to make the uh, wheel sit flat on it. So they did a good job putting the wheel back on. And they did their due diligence to tell me my brakes are junk. But basically, on the back here, there's enough light to see it or not. I'll have to get a flashlight or something to show you a bit better. There's, this uh, vehicle has obviously a disc brake on the back, and uh, it's got a cable on here for uh, parking brake. I think there's a couple different ways to do parking brake. Some of them, obviously, they have like a, a drum on the back, so that's going to be a different thing all together. So uh, it's got a brake hose right here and then the cable on the back. I'll get a light so you can see it better in a minute here. But basically we need to uh, take this caliper off, pinch off the brake hose so it doesn't drain the master cylinder, and then uh, get a new caliper on here. And I've never done this before with this style of uh, rotating piston thing contraption. So we'll see how that goes. So I guess I'll get set up with the light and kind of start breaking this thing down. We'll take another look at it. All right, so that's the uh, caliper here. This one's pretty stiff. So I think if we try to lever this back, it's not really helping. There's more, more trouble. It's really tight. Of course I have the uh, brake line pinched right now. I just put a little C-clamp on there. I don't recommend doing that. That's the first time I've ever done that in my life. I bought a little tool for pinching a line, but it doesn't seem to be here. So I don't have it to uh, use it. So I'm going to turn this light off here. And uh, we will... Start breaking this thing down. So it's got the uh, Phillips retainers on it as well. It's very annoying. And they're kind of stripped. It's kind of hard to do this backwards. But we'll try. This is going the wrong way.
not going in my favor here. All right, that's the tool to use, sadly. Seems like it's switching into the wrong direction for some reason. I make life very hard. Alright, I have to get the camera out of the way, I can't do this. But uh, that's, this is the right tool for doing this job. It's just that these are extra stuck, which is kind of to be expected, so bear with me here. All right, so I got the one screw out using the uh, tool. It worked pretty good. Just had to stand up and work in a normal position. I was able to get it out there pretty easy. I got this one halfway out, and it's pretty slow going. So I'm going to put the uh, bit on my impact driver and see if I can finish this off. This screw is junk now. Yeah, so we got that out of there now, thankfully. Now the, uh, I'm not sure what exactly is holding this caliper on. There's two bolts we go through to hold on the uh, guide pins. And might as well take them out, we don't really need them in our way. Got an entirely new caliper. You have to do that anyway to do the brake job. So that's a uh, 12 millimeter. Let's see how far that gets us. I could turn on the light, but it's just going to wash everything out. So I think this is probably better. I got a nice snap on uh, adjustable light. You can adjust how bright it is. It's much better than a quartz halogen or even a regular LED light. But it's just not quite right for the camera. Must be it for the caliper. There's got to be. You have to get the cable off of there somehow. The cable bracket. I think for the sake of me figuring this out, I'm not going on the light. I know that there's some kind of a large bracket on the bottom, which I think is this cable goes through it. Bit of a puzzle. It's always fun when you show someone how to do something that you've never done it before. That's part of the learning process, right? It's kind of fun to watch people learn and how they learn. In my opinion, anyway, you might hate watching this, but hopefully not. Got to be a trick for popping that out. I've got the vehicle down on the wood blocks now, so I think I'm going to have to turn off the uh, video and stick my head under there and see what it's going to take to finish separating this. All right, so there's a clip that's holding that cable in on the uh, brakes here. So we'll see if we get that clip to pop out of there. That wasn't in the replacement kit, so we can't destroy it. Uh, hopefully, I think it's moving. Got that, 
So I should have uh, another brake to go in further. Brake cable. So we'll just I don't know anything about the adjustments on the uh, parking brakes on these vehicles, so I'm just going to do this without adjusting the brake. You'd think that this would be easier to do if you had the caliper kind of loose right now. I don't want to damage this cable. I'm going to tap on it a bit. Yeah, I'm thinking what I need to do, I don't know if you can see here or not, is that uh, I need to get this to separate from here, which will be a bit of a struggle. But once I do that, I'll be able to pull this cable down far enough to disengage the caliper. And at that point, we'll have the hose attached still. But I think we can get this apart, so I'm going to work on that off camera. Alright, so I've come to the conclusion that cable is not coming out of that bracket. So we're going to have to uh, take the bracket off of the uh, caliper instead. So I noticed that it's a different size bolt on the replacement than the, uh, what's on here. Holy cow, it's tight too. Oh, it's going to break. Maybe not. Pretty close to being breaking power. Coming off. <sighs> Sorry, this is probably out of focus. Bit of a puzzle and it's kind of rusted on there, but we're gonna get it. There we got it. Now we gotta pry this guy up, disengage the brake. One step closer. Hopefully, move the camera a little. But that piston is all the way out pretty much. These pads are worn down pretty thin. You can't see it now, but I've had this apart and it was all cracked to pieces. And you can see this is kind of worn down on an angle like a wedge and that doesn't help either so you might want to have some inexpensive little pry bars available to do this job and the fact that this pad doesn't want to slide tells me that it's gonna be sticking 
anyway, there's more than just the uh, problem with the uh, caliper. thing. Smooth out of Light. Again, it's sort of worn as a wedge. So it's been getting pulled in there for a long time. So there must be a couple bolts in the back here holding this adapter on. So I'll get set up to get the adapter off and then we'll be able to get this rotor off which is going to be another whole problem that hopefully we don't go and destroy the uh, wheel bearing doing it. But we're on to the next step. Alright, so it's a 14 millimeter for the caliper adapters, so we'll go after them. Now, you can do this with a regular ratchet or a wrench. Should fit in there pretty good. Just want to make sure I'm not taking the wheel bearing out. I don't think so. They're pressed in wheel bearings. No, the wheel bearings are in further. This stuff turns, it's just rubbing on the adapter right now. So the problem with these ratchet wrenches is that you can get them on a bolt, but getting the bolt out of them is not that easy sometimes. I just want to get everything ready to go and do the uh, caliper replacement last because I don't want to have the uh, hydraulics open for very long. So let's see how bad this is going to be for the wheel bearing. You kind of want to the lug nuts for this? probably put the lug nuts on here before we uh, start pounding on it. Otherwise you might cave in on one of the studs. And the job just gets to become even more miserable than it has to be. And you have to file the studs. Because that's the one thing that the German cars you don't have to worry about. Because they use lug bolts instead of studs. Just kind of turn it a little bit. You're going to make a lot of dust at this point. If you have a means to, I would suggest putting some water on here. I'm going to go get a respirator actually while I'm doing this. So we'll come back to clubbing here in a second. Now I got my respirator on now. So if you do much more than that, that's pretty hard on the wheel bearings. It's hard to hear me right now, but it's going to wait for this dust to go away. Should have put water on this. And you can hose it down with a plate cleaner as well to take some of the dirt away. It's all right, it's not notchy in any way. I guess we'll take the old parts and put them on a table and take a look at them with uh, 
the new parts while we wait for the dust to subside. All right, here's new versus old. So like I mentioned before, I had some trouble getting the sizes of rotors to match on the front of this vehicle. But the back doesn't seem to be a problem. I just I put these back to back against each other and they're the same diameter. Uh, one thing I'll mention about the Canadian Touring Car is that it doesn't have any TPMS system at all in it, which seems kind of illegal to me. I don't understand how that's possible. It doesn't have a method of setting uh, the wheel diameter calibration as you would on some vehicles that don't have monitors in the tires. And it doesn't have monitors in the tires. It doesn't have anything. You can drive around with one flat tire, completely flat, and it doesn't go off for this uh, vehicle for some reason. So you can see that this rotor is in horrible shape. It's been like this for a few years now. It couldn't use the parking brake. It was only pushing on one side, which is bad for the wheel bearings because it just it pushes the rotor out where the caliper is. So it side loads the bearings instead of really gripping on them. You can see the pads. You can look at that, the meat on that compared to this. Pretty much cooked. And I didn't pay attention to the order these came out on. But you can tell that that's the outboard pad, just the way it, the clamp would have went on it. And the round part is the piston. So you know that the uh, squeaker is on the piston side. So that's good. The uh, adapter comes on this here. I notice that the grease in here is not very good. I'm going to take this apart and re-grease these because uh, I don't know if there's any grease in there. It just feels this doesn't slide very nicely. I'm kind of surprised because that's like the high-end Firequest uh, caliper with the coating on it and everything. So there's that. There's all kinds of things. I don't know what the hell figure that as we go. I can see that it has these on here. There must be a, there's two different styles. I guess you have to pay attention. This is probably on the caliper. It probably goes up in there. Look on the other one and see what it's got. And then we'll have some extras that we don't need. So that's pretty good. So I guess uh, We'll clean off the face of the uh, wheel bearing assembly flange for the wheel. Make sure that's nice and flat. Put a little bit of grease on there and uh, get this on. I'm not going to put those screws back in because they were a nightmare to get them out. They're not going to work anymore. So I'll just kind of loosely hang that on there and get ready to do a, a quick replacement of the uh, caliper. All right, so I kind of hosed this off and wired it off while it was still wet. Just waiting for it to dry off now, so I just used a bit of brake clean. And a, a wire brush to do that. And I was right about the pins in this adapter. There's like nothing on them. Just a tiny little bit of grease. So I'm going to put some Sil Glide on these. It's a good thing if uh, you use it on rubber. It's been around for decades. I don't know, I learned about this stuff a long time ago. Let's just put a bit of stuff on there. Feels a lot better already. I haven't used this particular brand of it before. The tube was obviously used, but I got it when I bought some tools from a garage. It's kind of different color. Normally it's a bit yellow, but it's still Sil Glide, I think. Maybe not, they call it something else. Easy Glide. Sil Glide's the original stuff. That's not beside the point, I guess. So now we're gonna put this adapter back on here after I put the uh, rotor on. So we'll put a bit of grease on the hub here so it doesn't get stuck on. I like to use copper anti-seize, it's just that mine is uh, missing right now. It's packed up in storage and I don't have access to it. 
I'm just doing this to keep it from getting stuck on in the future. You don't want slinging grease everywhere. So try to be a bit cleaner in the application than that. And obviously, you clean off your fingers so you don't get any on the... Uh, Alright, so unfortunately I'm just about out of memory space on my card here, so um, I just put the brake adapter back on, put some uh, grease on the pads, and put those into place. At this point you would just put the uh, caliper back on, and it needs to be adjusted, which I'm not sure how to do yet. So that might uh, be in the video or not, I'm sorry about that. I'll see if I can uh, fit it in. Alright, so this is going to be the quick finale. So you use the tool with the adapter and you would put it in here and if you had a good caliper you would be able to wind it back into position but this caliper is junk it won't go back in so that's why we're replacing it but if you were just doing a pad job you would turn this back in as minimal as you would need to get it onto here and then I think it would be self adjusting after that so sorry for the quick ending to this video but uh, thank you for watching Alright, so I felt a little bit guilty how we ended this video, so let's do a, a little bit of a recap on it. So I reused this caliper on this side, and uh, I've used a parking brake and stopped, and it's not sticking, so that's good. It was sticking before as a result of uh, just the condition of the rotors. So you can see it's not quite wearing as much as I'll show you on the other side. There's like a, an eighth of an inch or so that's not being uh, rubbed on by the uh, pad. So I noticed that initially it was even less. So I might need to change this caliper. It's kind of strange it's not pushing all the way. It could very well bed in, but I don't, not really used to seeing things like this. I can check the wheel bearing pushing in and out. And it's nice and tight, so you didn't do any damage when I was pulling the rotors off. So, uh, to set the replacement uh, pads into the uh, calipers, I found all you needed to do was uh, screw them in. You can use a big screwdriver if you don't have that special tool. And that works well. And then the first time you push the brakes, it's going to uh, adjust them. You might have to push the brakes a couple times to get the piston out far enough. But once you do that, then the parking brake will start working. If you try to use the parking brake before you uh, use the brakes with your foot pedal, it's just not going to work. So uh, that was something I learned that was pretty interesting. So they're more or less self-adjusting. You don't need to do anything for them. Just waiting for a vehicle to drive by, then we'll take a look at the other side. Alright, so you can see on the side I've got the new caliper on. I had to reuse the uh, bracket with the parking brake cable. And it's wearing in a little bit further onto the uh, pad. You can't really see that. But with this, I ended up doing a uh, just a regular kind of a bleeding on this where I used uh, a vacuum bleeder. If you had someone to help you, you could just have them push the brake pedal and you could bleed it conventionally but I was just working by myself. I didn't use the uh, scan tool to uh, actually uh, evacuate any air out of the system. It didn't, just using that little hose clamp prevented any dripping from coming out of the hose and it worked out really well. I didn't use very much fluid at all. Where previously if you let the master drain out you use a lot of fluid and it's a big waste. So I'm happy with that. This wheel I lifted it up and it's not dragging either. So the uh, locking up problem with my brakes is now fixed. So I guess the next step is I'm going to have to tighten the lugs, make sure that they're still tight because it's been a, a day and a half since I did this job. And then we'll have a few other things we've got to take care of after that. All right, so the last step is that we got to get rid of our uh, scrap steel. Just going to drop in a Kimco here and see what's going on. So you bring in your brake rotors and then you come back uh, the next day and you can buy uh, structural steel or whatever you want. So there's some people dumping some stuff off over there, that's where we're going to be going. 
they had something good and they go down the hill. It's actually a pretty neat place. You don't need to buy 20 foot lengths from them, they'll cut things to length. And if they don't have them in stock, they make it overnight for you. So let's wait my turn and go in here. All right, so that's what we're dropping off here today. A set of rotors, then the pads, and then the one caliper. There's no core on that, so we'll just toss it out. And looks like someone left a little uh, organizer here. Some weights, a little baby barbecue. Nothing too exciting today. But you see all the structural steel over there. You can get any type of steel you can imagine here, and they got rail cars and everything. Just melt it down and make something new for you. So, let's get this off out of the vehicle and we'll go on to the next part of the job. All right, so last part here, I just got gas and now we're gonna go into the car wash. This is the most expensive car wash I've ever paid for. It was $16.94 or whatever the maximum is. Never used this one. I was place I normally go to that was closed for whatever reason. Let's punch in our number here. Five three four three eight. Five three four three eight. I guess we gotta wait for someone to go through here. Yeah let's see what's going on in there. Hope there's no surprise. All right, I guess we'll turn this on in a second. All right, apparently it's our turn now. So five, three, four, three, eight. Three, four, three, eight. All right, we're going in. As far as I can tell, we're all sealed up. So let's see what happens for $17. Hopefully it does the side of the wheels. There we are. Please place car in park. So this is exciting. The machine looks sim similar to the one I usually go out to at Canadian Tire. This takes more money out of your pocket. This be the real test. I didn't try to wipe the bugs off the windshield or anything. He's going around the sides. So I just reset the uh, fuel economy. I noticed it was getting better since I worked on the brakes, which makes sense, but right now the number is crazy because uh, I only reset it 1.3 kilometers ago. Should be around 7.7. .7. Yeah, so I mentioned that this was a uh, touring package car so one thing it does have on the interior is the uh, navigation uh, I'm not sure what to make of it it's the navigation system is not integrated into the car very well or I shouldn't say that there's some things it can't do so we can't set uh, tire pressure monitors so that's probably why the car doesn't have TPMS on it or if you got the plain Jane car the backup mirror would, or, would be there Whereas this one you put in reverse, the backup comes up on this display. I noticed that uh, when the uh, battery was dying on it the first time around, the display would turn black and it wouldn't work very well. So that's a good like precursor to tell you you got battery problems. And I've never updated this display. It's kind of expensive to update it. So uh, 
I wouldn't recommend it. And the other problem is whenever you have your sunroof open and the sun is high in the sky, you can't even read this thing, so you have to close your sunroof. So, uh, yeah, I think this is the last car I'm going to buy with navigation on it. Just use a cell phone. That works pretty good. Because you can download the maps with, like, uh, here. That's a good uh, map program. Oh, my windshield's not clean yet. What are we protecting it for? You'll never get these little mirror glass very well with the mirror the way it is. That's pretty much any vehicle. I have to clean that by hand later. Let's go around the back. Now what's happening? It's raining on us. Can you believe it? 16.94. That's more than minimum wage. I guess we gotta try to time this uh, jet stream here to dry us off. Sixty seconds. It's already counting. I haven't even got there yet. Unbelievable. Clean. We're not making any weird noises with our brakes anymore, so I think it's a success. So thanks for sticking in there and watching this through the car wash with me. So thank you very much. Goodbye.